Well, good afternoon, Trinity. This is our Good Friday Stations of the Cross contemplative service. I'm out here, as you can see, in our beautiful green space with the Stations of the Cross that were so lovingly built by Chuck Evans four years ago. And I am going to invite all of us in this most unusual of holy weeks to truly take the time to contemplate on Jesus' last day on this earth as he was condemned to death. And then he took that walk, that long, painful walk to the hill of Golgotha with the cross. Along the way, he stumbled and fell. Along the way, he met women that were weeping. Along the way, compassionate people gave him signs of hope and supported him, walked with him as he walked with them in this most tragic of times. I can think of nothing more appropriate on this Good Friday of 2020 than to see and depict and meditate on Jesus walking with us in suffering and in pain, in confusion, and yes, even with death all around. But we know what happens on the other side of the story. We know that we have to go through Good Friday to get to Easter Sunday, to get to resurrection, to get to the hope and the joy and the light that comes after the darkness. But I invite us all now in this time to come and walk along that path. Even as we are out here, it is sort of cold and damp, but yet the birds are singing and the flowers are blooming. This is the juxtaposition. This is the crossroads that we find ourselves in Good Friday 2020. Signs of life, signs of spring, signs of hope, and signs of sadness and confusion as coronavirus cases continue to mount, as we are told not even to go to the grocery stores, as we are told to stay away from everyone as much as possible. I pray that in this Good Friday we can all remember that. Stay safe, keep praying, but do the things that we need to do to protect our community and our family in Christ right here at Trinity. Let us begin our walk now. Gracious Lord, let us all now focus our hearts and our minds on this walk, on this prayerful, contemplative, meditative walk as we think about that walk that Jesus took on the last day of his life through the streets of Jerusalem. Lord, we begin this walk at the first station of the cross, which is when Jesus is condemned to death by Pilate. When Pilate washes his hands of any responsibility for what he has just done, condemned the Son of God to a painful and gruesome death on the cross. Jesus, of course, stands in the face of this injustice bravely, with conviction, without any fear. As we contemplate this first station of the cross, may we too take that model as our example of strength and face all of our difficulties, the injustice in this world, without fear, with strength and conviction. O oh Lord, may the strength and conviction of Jesus as he faced his fate strengthen us in these days ahead. We do not know what will lie before us, but we know that we can face it all with courage and conviction. We give thanks to Christ for this in our lives. Amen. We arrive now at the second station of the cross. Jesus takes up his cross as we come and contemplate what he did in that moment. Let us remember that again, bravely, he took up his cross, the heavy instrument of his death, put it upon his shoulders, and walked bravely on to the hill. He knew it was coming. It was painful. But he shouldered that burden. He shouldered that heavy wooden cross, just like he has continued to shoulder our burdens if we but rely upon him, but believe in him, and put our faith and trust in him, we know that all of our burdens, all of our crosses, all of the heavy weight that we carry, Jesus carries along with us. Let us contemplate on that. Second station of the cross. As 
we give thanks to Christ for what he has done for us. Jesus, we give you thanks for picking up that cross, for taking that heavy burden and all of our burdens with you. Lord, we know that in these days when things may seem dark, we can place our heavy burdens upon your shoulders. We know that you will help us moving forward in these days and that better days are to come. We give thanks to you, O Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. We come now to the third station of the cross. Jesus falls for the first time. Even though he has agreed to carry this cross, the weight is unbearable and it crushes him. He is roughly pulled up by the Roman soldiers that have condemned him. They pull him up so he can continue walking towards his fate. But in this moment, just as in the moment when Jesus weeps with Martha and Mary over the loss of their dear friend Lazarus, Jesus is also falling down under the weight of the world here to connect with us. This is God's way of showing that God understands when we are crushed by heavy burdens, by loss and by grief, by the unfairness of the world. This moment represents Jesus' promise to be with us down on our knees on the ground. We give thanks that Jesus has gone there with us. As we contemplate this third station of the cross, Lord, we give you thanks for what you have done for us to be down with us on our hands and knees in the broken moments of our lives. Help us remember that as we are down, we should always look up and we will see you there, reaching out for us, lifting us up. Amen. We come now to the fourth station of the cross. Mary meets Jesus. We can only imagine her heartbreak as she reaches out and comforts her son on his way to his death. Mary has been there, the strength, the rock in Jesus' life for so long. Blessed is she in this tender and heartfelt moment. Mary expresses the love and comfort and gives Jesus the strength, gives her son the strength to move on. In this moment, God has connected to all of us, every mother, every father that has lost a child. Every mother, every father, every parent that has gone through the loss and pain of a child that has died from sickness, from accidents, from overdoses, perhaps from coronavirus. Every parent that has lost can recognize in this moment, the fourth station of the cross, that God will be right with you in that loss, comforting you, holding you tight in a loving embrace. Gracious Lord, we pray a prayer of thanksgiving for Mary, the mother of Jesus, as she has taught us all how to love unconditionally, with self-sacrifice for her entire life, for this world. Lord, in this moment, we pray for all those mothers who have lost children, to gun violence, to illness, to tragedy, and all the ways that they have lost. May they feel God's love surround them. We come now to the fifth station of the cross, which is Simon of Cyrene helping carry Jesus' cross. Now in scripture, we are told that the Roman soldiers forced Simon to do that. So we don't know whether he did it because he was feeling sympathy for Jesus, because he was forced to do so, and the soldiers were trying to further humiliate Jesus, but not even allowing him to carry his own burden. All these theories have been proposed for this moment in the scriptures. What we do know, what we do know, is that Jesus is continuing on his walk to the cross. 
and he is suffering, it is difficult, it is hard. Bearing this burden is not easy, and he had some help from Simon. Simon was from North Africa, a Jewish community in Libya, and he was in Jerusalem for the Passover celebration. He represents just one of the many people that supported Jesus from all over the world, and that community that Simon was from, we do know, was one of the early centers of Christianity. So perhaps this moment, whether Simon believed before, we can believe that at this moment, he was converted by what he saw in Jesus walking with his cross. And then this moment, Simon brought that message back to North Africa and began to spread the gospel news of this man that he saw that was so full of love, that was so full of compassion, that was suffering for the world. That's what we have here at the fifth station of the cross. Let us contemplate and pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for those who help us along our path. Every single one of us who struggles in this world has had someone help us in those dark moments, carry those burdens, support us, be with us. Lord, in this time of social distancing, let us not forget to reach out in whatever ways we can to those who have helped us. They are truly part of our family in Christ in this earth. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. We come now to the sixth station of the cross. In this station, we have the famous story of Veronica, a woman in the processions, watching Jesus walk, taking pity upon him, handing him her veil so that he could wipe the blood and tears off his face. Now, we don't find this story anywhere in our scriptures. But as it says famously in the end of the Gospel of John, John 21, verse 25, and Jesus did many more things that were not written down in this book. So we know that the whole story wasn't there. So this has become part, particularly, of the Catholic tradition. But whether it happened or not, it is a lovely image. It is a lovely image of sympathy and compassion towards Jesus. He has shown so much sympathy and compassion towards all of those in his ministry, the poor, the brokenhearted, the oppressed, the lepers, the prostitutes, the tax collectors, and even the Pharisees, the rich and the poor alike. All of that Jesus showed compassion for. And here now, in his moment of suffering, we have someone showing compassion to him. Let us con contemplate on that compassion as we pray. Jesus, on this day, this most holy, sacred, sorrowful, and yet glorious day, we contemplate on the compassion that you have shown to all of us, saints and sinners alike. Lord, help us to remember to show that compassion to everyone that we meet, all those who are suffering in this time, all the health care workers that are working valiantly to save lives, all those people suffering from coronavirus and anything else. Lord, help us, though, to remember to show you compassion as well, that we ask so much from you, but we need to devote ourselves in love and compassion to you in your suffering. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. We come now to the seventh station of the cross. Jesus falls for a second time. In this moment, we can imagine Jesus face down, face down in the dirt, and he may have thought, from dust I was made, and to dust I shall return. We heard those words on Ash Wednesday at the beginning of this Lenten journey in the wilderness, and now we come face to face with Jesus' human frailty and difficulty as he stumbles and falls yet again carrying this burden. In this moment, may we continue to remember that in our moments when we are face down in the dust, that Jesus has been there first, that he has been there before us, and he will be there in those moments, that God's compassion extends to us in our weakest 
and most downtrodden moments. Let us contemplate on this as we pray. Gracious Lord, even when I am face down to the ground in sorrow, in loss, crushed by the weight of the world, I know that you have been there first. You have been there to experience that so that I will never have to go through that alone. Help us all to remember that we never suffer alone or in silence. You are always there. We give thanks for that. We pray these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. And now we come to the eighth station of the cross. The women of Jerusalem and their children meet Jesus. This is one of my favorite stops along this route because it reminds us again of the humility and compassion that Jesus showed to them that they are now giving back to him. We know that all throughout his ministry, Jesus broke barriers for the women of Jerusalem. He lifted up the children as the models for how to enter the kingdom of heaven, these children that were never even supposed to be seen or heard in their day. He spoke to so many women. He empowered them. Yes, Jesus was one of the first feminists, and I will say that proudly. Jesus broke those bounds, and he did so much for the women of his society and his culture, reminding us all today of the equality that we have in our Christian communities where men and women sit together side by side, where they preach the word, where they bring the readings of the scriptures and do the ministry of this church. Jesus did all of that for them, and now here they are giving him support, compassion, and love, but also grieving the loss of their champion, their savior. This is a moment of profound sadness, but gratitude. Let us contemplate our gratitude that we have for all that Jesus has done for all of us in this time. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for Jesus' barrier-breaking ministry. When he came into this world as the epitome of God's love and broke all the bounds that we as human beings try to create, to separate one another, for us to tell others that we are better than them, Jesus said, I will have none of it. Jesus said, you are to love your neighbors as yourself. You are to love your God, and that is the most important commandment. He loved us all equally, just as God does. May we remember that every time we think we are better than someone else because of our gender, our sexuality, our race, our immigration status, we remember that Jesus says to all of us, none of that. You are all equal and beloved in my eyes. For that message, Jesus, we give you gratitude and thanks. Amen. And now we come to the ninth station of the cross. As he is getting close to the hill upon which his earthly body shall die, he falls yet again a third time. Here we can see the depiction in the art that the soldiers, the models of strength, looked at Jesus as a weak and broken soul, a broken man. But as we know, God will have the last laugh, and this broken, weak man was the epitome of strength. That's what God was saying. He is actually stronger than all of you with your swords and your breastplates and your weapons. This man, armed only with love, broken and fallen to the ground a third time, is actually the strongest of you all. That is the message from this station at the cross, that we can also give thanks for Jesus pouring out his broken body for us, that we get strength from what he did, but also that he showed the world what true strength looks like, compassion, nonviolence, and love. Gracious Lord, as Jesus falls a third time, as he appears to be broken and battered, Lord, we know that you had other plans. We know that this moment of weakness is actually a moment of great strength. May we find strength 
in his determination to finish the job he was called here to do. May we find strength in his determination not to fight back, not to show violence or anger in the face of injustice, but to withstand it, resist it, and overturn it ultimately on the cross. We pray all these things, that they may be true in our lives, that we may continue the work of resisting oppression that Jesus began in our world here and now. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. And now we come to the 10th station of the cross. Jesus' walk has ended. He is now being prepared for crucifixion. He is stripped of his garments. He is stripped completely naked, humiliated, that final humiliation where he has exposed everything to us. He has left nothing behind. This is such an image, but it's difficult to look at. It is difficult to see him so humiliated and stripped. But we know in this moment again he is reaching out to us and saying he has been there through any humiliation that we may suffer in our lives. He has been there before and he will be there again. He has truly given everything for us and at this 10th station of the cross let us take a moment to contemplate that total giving. Jesus, we thank you for giving everything for us, for not holding back even in the face of humiliation and pain. We know that you have walked through that pain and humiliation before us and that you will be there for those moments in our lives. We give you thanks. Amen. And now we come to the 11th station. Jesus is nailed to the cross. This is a painful and difficult moments. And now we know that when you have been crucified, those who were crucified actually ended up dying because they couldn't breathe. As they're in that position, the lungs collapse and they can no longer breathe. Right now, we have many people in America who are struggling to breathe. We know that we have lost over 11,000 people to the coronavirus in this nation alone. And this virus takes people's ability to breathe away from them. So we know how many people are suffering right now as we speak to breathe. Let us pray for all of them in this moment. That Jesus struggled to breathe, that he was there, went through that with all of them. That every victim, everyone that is struggling from this horrible illness, that Jesus is right there with them, struggling to breathe. Gracious Lord, as this virus continues to ravage this nation and this world, Lord, we pray that you will make your presence known to those struggling to breathe. We pray that your presence will be known to all those who are suffering, Lord, and we pray that the rest of us will take seriously our call to stay healthy, stay safe, not to endanger others by going about our daily lives. We know, Lord, that this time shall end and we will come to a moment when we can live again as we had before. But that time is not yet. That time is not now. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. We come now to the twelfth station, Jesus' moment of death upon the cross. This is a moment when Jesus, who had been surrounded by crowds and thousands for so much of his ministry, was truly isolated. There were only a few of his most beloved disciples there. We know that Mary, his mother, was there at the foot of the cross. We know that Mary Magdalene was there. By some accounts, the beloved disciple we believe was John was there as well. But there was a small crowd at the foot of the cross in his last moments. And in these last moments, we know that he cried, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Quoting the first verse of Psalm 22. The psalm 
was a psalm of comfort, in fact. This psalm goes on to remind the reader, the hearer, that God is still with them no matter what, no matter how it seems that God has forsaken us, God has not. And that is the point of this station of the cross. As Jesus dies from his earthly life, we are told that the curtain in the temple in Jerusalem was torn in two. This curtain was the thing that separated God from humanity. This separation was ended on that moment that Jesus died on the cross. That moment God was welcomed into all of our hearts, all of our lives. God was no longer separated from us. We were no longer separated from God, but we were one. And that is the lesson from this 12th station of the cross. Let us contemplate and pray on that. God, in this moment of isolation from our friends, our family, and our loved ones, let us contemplate on the fact that we are never isolated, that in that moment of isolation, for Jesus, all of us were connected completely, intimately, eternally to you. For that, we give thanks. So now we come to the 13th station of the cross. Jesus is taken down from the cross and held lovingly in Mary's arms. This is the famous moment immortalized by Michelangelo in the sculpture of the Pieta. In that beautiful sculpture, in that beautiful moment, we are reminded again of Jesus' humanity as his mother cradles his lifeless body in her arms. The sacrifice is complete. Jesus has died and gone into God's hands. This moment is a moment of sadness, but it is also a moment of gratitude and thanks again, for we know what happens when Jesus goes to the grave. He goes there for us, and then he is gloriously resurrected again. But before we get to that, let us contemplate the tender human moment. This is also for every mother that has lost a child. For every mother that has lost a child that may have cradled that child's body in their arms, Lord, this is for all of you. May you know that God is comforting you even in that moment, that God has gone there with you. Gracious Lord, for all mothers that have lost their sons, for the mother of the Son of God who was grieving in that moment, Lord, we pray for them all that they may know your comfort, your solace in that most tender and human of moments. We pray all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Now we come to the 14th station of the cross. In many traditions, this is the final station. Here at Trinity, we have one more, the 15th station, focusing on the resurrection. But for now, we have our last stop on this journey of grief. Here, Jesus is being laid in the tomb. And we are told that this was the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a wealthy man who donated his sacred burial spot to Jesus. Here again, we have the culmination of the story where rich and poor, wealthy and impoverished, people of all kinds, men and women and the sick, the lame, the healthy, everyone was under Jesus' care. He came for all of us. So this moment has always spoken that message to me. He is laid in the tomb and the heavy stone is rolled over. The final sign of death. Yeah. But we know that that stone will be rolled away. That tomb shall be found empty just three days later. So now, let us contemplate on this dark and quiet moment in the shadows of the tomb. The stillness is where God does God's work. 
we all know that we must go into the shadows and the stillness on Good Friday, Holy Saturday, before we come into the sunshine of resurrection. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the shadows and the quiet of the tomb. In this quiet and stillness, may you work your glorious miracles of life and resurrection. We remember that the seeds are in the tomb, the darkness of the soil before they sprout forth new life in the spring. In the darkness of the wombs, we, our new lives were created. Lord, may this time of darkness be fruitful, fertile, and full of hope. Amen. And now we come to the 15th station, our added station to the cross, the glorious resurrection. Now I know it's a little early to do that on Good Friday, so we will save the Alleluia's for Easter Sunday morning. But we cannot forget as we walk through this darkness and as we do have a difficult time in our nation, in our world, especially difficult this Holy Week, let us remember what we are celebrating, what is coming up, and that there is hope and light after the darkness. Let us pray. Gracious Lord, for walking this difficult walk with us, we give you thanks for showing us, going before us, and showing us that you have been there in our trials, our tribulations, when we are knocked down on the ground, when we struggle to breathe, when we are full of tears and grief and sorrow, Lord. We give you thanks. Help us this Good Friday to remember that no matter what we are struggling with in this moment, you have walked before us through it and are walking with us today. Help us to keep our faces pointed towards the sunshine, even amidst the clouds. And in that sunshine, may we feel your sun pouring love down upon us. Amen. <laughs>